The second scripture we read this morning is Matthew 3, and I'll be reading chapter, or excuse me, verses 13 through 17. Then Jesus came from Galilee to Jordan to John to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. And when Jesus was baptized, he went up immediately from the water, and behold, the heavens were open, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on them. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Today, as we start a new year, um, I want to turn us to covenant. We're going to be following the lectionary, a series of readings um, that churches and denominations around the world share and hold in common. Um, and this is a following of Christ's life and Christ's ministry. So as we celebrated at Christmas, Christ's birth, um, now we celebrate his entrance into full-time ministry, and we're going to follow. And so there's going to be a lot of talk on what it means to be a disciple and to follow Christ and what that life looks like um, and feels like and maybe sometimes tastes like and smells like, not always the greatest, um, but it is where life and hope and love and joy, all of those things that we waited for during Advent, are needed the most. And so we walk um, with Christ and we begin this journey today as he begins um, in baptism and taking on publicly this mantle as teacher um, and we'll follow as he begins to call the disciples and find our own calling in those moments. Jesus did not come out of a vacuum though and for as much as it's hard to remember his humanity in the midst of his divinity today, I want to emphasize that. Um, we, we went through what it meant last Sunday um, to be born into the mix of life, and we know from our own joys and concerns shared this Sunday that there is a mix of evil and hope that is very much present now just as it was then. And so in this story of Matthew, it began with the family fleeing to Egypt as refugees to escape Herod's wrath and fear. And all of the other's mothers in Rama who were lamenting for the children who were killed. There is real injustice and there is real pain. And with and through Jesus as Emmanuel, God with us, we begin to trust that there is real hope and joy and love and peace as well. Now, these things didn't come into being or work miraculously. Jesus didn't have the patent on them, let's say that way. This was a process of God working with God's people and calling that began all the way back with Abraham and a covenant that God established with him so that God would bless him and his descendants in order to bless all the families of the earth. But we're human, right? And sometimes it gets a little hard to keep sharing that blessing as a through line, and sometimes we want to stop those gates and save it up for ourselves, right? And enjoy it and keep it, and it doesn't flow as it would, as God would hope it would through us to be shared and to affect and to better others' lives. And so we have the whole story um, of our faith and scripture, of all of the different ways God was at work trying to work with us as a covenant people so that that blessing would be shared. And that is part of the reading from Isaiah and from the work of the prophets today um, and calling people back to what that covenant meant and what that right living, that sadaka, that righteousness looked like to what God's justice was that was often talked in those days of what it meant um, to take care of the widow and the orphan and the sojourners, those who were most vulnerable in society. 
And then, of course, we can't do any of that without hesed, without loving kindness that is given to us from God that we share and extend. And when we have that perfect trinity of covenant playing together, we get shalom. We get God's wholeness in ourselves, in our communities, in our cities, in earth and creation itself. And so just as Isaiah was calling folks back to covenant then, um, we had a little bit of trouble, right? We humans, and, and we get into that cycle that especially we can see in the book of Judges of people doing really well in covenant, and then we get a little lazy and a little complacent, and then things start to fall away and fall away and fall away. And then there's a huge crisis, and all of a sudden we wake up, and God raises up a leader, and we're all back, and we're all focused again. And then it just keeps repeating and repeating and repeating, and God's like, there has got to be a better way. And so God becomes Emmanuel, God with us. And the best gift of Jesus is that it's not some generic representation of all humanity, right? Jesus is one particular man, one individual, born in one place, growing up and living and working in one very small region of the world in one pretty short lifetime. But the gift that is given is what Alexa was sharing with her friend, the gift of hope and of goodness coming and being brought about by how one person chooses to use and to live the gifts that they have to share them to bless others. Now, we're saying, okay, Kate, but Jesus is also fully divine, and so there's a lot going on there that we don't have access to, but I would ask that we not let ourselves off the hook that easily because we are all made in the image of God. Because in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. When God, the Spirit of God, swept over the face of the waters and called forth life and light, Jesus was there. And as the Gospel of John continues, all things came into being through him. Without him, not one thing came into being. And that which was coming into being... What was brought into being was life. And all things that are in being, that life, that being, is the light of all people. That being is a part of who we are. We are that mix of divine and physical. Not quite just as Jesus Christ was but in that same model and in that same following. So just as Jesus was one particular man in one place at one time following God, so we are called to be our particular selves in the places we are and the times we are to follow God in covenant that God might use us and work with us and through us and in us to bring forth God's wholeness, God's peace. And that happens when we are in righteousness, when we are in right relationship, when there is justice and when there is loving kindness. And so as we sung and as Rob read for us in the gospel, Jesus himself didn't need to come to be baptized in the sense that there was no turning around, no call to repentance, no turning from that Jesus needed to do as we need to do. But I would say that there was a turning to. He had a choice not to follow and not to fulfill what God wanted to do through him. But he chose to. And in that baptism moment was him stepping into his call, into his ministry, into his gifts to use them to be a blessing for all of us. And that is our baptismal covenant call. And so as we begin this new year and as we begin this new, relatively new journey together as a church, 
I want to ground ourselves in this covenant and in this beginning. That we step into this river, and for Jesus, it was definitely not as beautiful as it was for this man being baptized. Because um, in the literal and figurative meaning of it, Jesus stepped into the muddy waters of the Jordan River and of life. And it wasn't perfect, and it wasn't pretty all the time. And let's be honest, he got mad. There were tables that were overturned. There were moments he needed to be schooled. Let's not forget the Syrophoenician woman who corrected his understanding standing of call. And if that happened for Christ, that will happen again and again for us. But that's what it means to step into the waters of our baptism and to live from there every single moment of our lives. There is a wonderful moment of right relationship that we are able to glimpse at this moment where Jesus is stepping into the fullness of his call and being present and being where God can use them. And in that moment, the heavens open up and the spirit of God descends and alights on him because even he who is God with us is never alone and God is with him. And you have the voice of God, a proud papa moment, right? This is my son with whom I'm well pleased. Come on, dads, you have had that moment, right? We have had those moments of all of life lining up and knowing the possibility that is present of the possibility that happens when we give who we are to be used in blessing and covenant. That's the moment that we celebrated with Alexa in the airport of her friend giving who she was to be used and blessing and covenant. That's the moment we celebrated with Barbara and you can of we and your gifts and the offerings that you give today being used in blessing and covenant and being there. And that's the gift of Beth and Barbara, too. We got a lot of stuff going through Barbara and you can. I like it. I like it. Of lining and working schedules to be with and to be present, to be a blessing as is needed. That's happening right as we speak with Katie and with Kim, with our kids in Children's Church down below, of Judy and all of our Sunday school teachers putting together the wise men trek. It happens again and again in our midst, and it's a beautiful and powerful thing. And quite frankly, I'm a little insatiable, and I want more. It's a wonderful thing that I want to see happen more and more and more, not just in our church and not just in Cockeysville and not just in Maryland. You get where I'm going, right? Um, It's that same, not just in Jerusalem, but to Judea, to Samaria, to the ends of the earth. The beauty and the hope and the power of what can come from covenantal right relationship. That's when miracles happen. And that's what we'll be traveling with and learning from in Jesus. And that's how we know the story ends. We know that there is justice even in the midst of injustice. We know that this story ends as it always does with the wrong powers winning with what happens always happenings when you threaten the status quo of evil. And in its fear, it turns brutal and violent. Except even with that ending happening, the one that always does happen, it still gets turned on its end. And life happens in the midst of death. And wholeness happens in the midst of brokenness. And God's justice, God's will is done on earth as it is in heaven. There will be a day when that justice reigns in completeness for all people and for all creation. We can't forget all of the pain and injustice our creation has been through too. But until that day, we are called to live in and from and through our baptismal covenant so that more and more might have a taste of the kingdom of God, of God's shalom. And so we come. We come as Jesus stood in solidarity with us and entering those muddy waters. 
we come to pledge that today as well. To give all of who we are, even if the times were not our best and we're broken and we feel that we don't have anything to give, to give even that and to let God use that so that there might be a way that is made through us and through our living for more people to have a taste of God's hope, God's joy, God's peace, and God's love. And guys, I want it more than anything. So are you with me? Will you do it? All right. So let's start this discipleship journey and turn with me to page 36. And we're going to do a, a baptism and remembering and calling and committing and bringing us forward. So if this week, if you would think on, as we go over this baptismal covenant, where we individually and we collectively as a church have lived into this and where we need to live into it a little bit more. And let's be amazed. Let's be amazed at what God can accomplish and do through us. And so, Bill, will you do your deacon thing and be our water baptismal guy? <laughs> Thanks. See, we're all using our gifts, even when I forget to tell him ahead of time, because that's how amazing he is. All right, so on page 36, we're going to give thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Eternal Father, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. And after the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. And when you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan to the land that you promised. Sing to the Lord all the earth and tell of God's mercy each day. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus nurtured in the water of a womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share, his disciples, that's us too, we're called to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection to make disciples of all nations. Declare his works to the nations and his glory among all the people. So God, we ask that you pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water and all of us who receive it to wash away our sin and to clothe us in righteousness throughout our lives, that dying and being raised with Christ, we may share in his final victory. All praise, praise to you, you eternal, eternal Father, Father through your, your Son, Father, Jesus Christ, who with, with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. All right. We're actually going to get wet. Are you ready? Okay. So for all of those who have been baptized, this is a remembrance. And for all of those who have not been baptized yet, maybe this little bit of water will begin a calling in your heart and in your spirit for your name to be written into God's name and this salvation story as well. All right. Are you ready? Do you want to do it? All right. I'll hold it for you. All right, so we're going to say, um, we're going to say, remember your uh, baptism and be thankful. And even though it's cold water, if you could still respond, amen, that'd be great. Because it's not always perfect. Yeah, yeah. Bring it on. Where's my super soaker? I know, right? The youth pastor wants a super soaker. I love this guy. <laughs> remember your baptism and be thankful. 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 We don't have a lot of strong amens. Are we okay? Nobody's melting, are they? Or if you are melting, are you being molded and filled and used? <laughs> Remember your baptism and be thankful. Yeah, thanks. Remember your baptism and be thankful. 
Remember your baptism and be thankful. Remember your baptism and be thankful. Remember your baptism and be thankful. Woo-hoo. All right. Remember your baptism and be thankful. Are we going to let the guys in the back get away with this? Let's get, oh, electronics. Okay, okay. <laughs> Amen. Remember your baptism and be thankful. All right. And so we pray that those being born of water and of spirit, both the physical and the divine. Oh, you're right, you're right, the choir. We can't let them be out of being born in water and spirit. Oh, do I need to stand? <laughs> okay, no piano, no piano. Linda's nervous. Okay, we did it, we did it. <laughs> all right, that being born of water and spirit, may we all live and walk as faithful disciples of Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, we're going to close with a baptismal hymn. I was there to hear your born.